Welcome. In this video, we're going to be learning about series and parallel circuits. Let's say I have a cell and two bulbs. If I want to turn these bulbs on, I have to connect them with a metal wire. Now I have a circuit and the bulbs were turned on. Here's another cell and two more bulbs. This time, I'm going to connect them slightly differently. Now I've made a different circuit, and just like the previous one, the bulbs will also turn on here. But notice, the two circuits I've made are slightly different. On the left side, the bulbs are attached end to end. This is called a series circuit. And on the right, the bulbs are side by side. So here we have a parallel circuit. Let's talk about what makes these circuits different. So starting with the series circuit, here's how we draw it as a basic circuit diagram. Here's how you represent the cell, and our two bulbs are over here. Now one rule about a series circuit is that current is the same everywhere. That means even if I move the bulbs to over here, they're still going to have the same current and shine with the same brightness. The next rule about series circuits is that the potential difference or the voltage is shared. So if I have a cell which has five volts, that five volts will be shared between the two bulbs. So for example, they would get 2.5 volts each if they were identical. Or if they were not identical, one could get one, the other one could get four, or two and three, or three and two, as long as it adds up to five. This is a switch, and right now the switch is closed. When the switch is closed, the current can flow through the circuits, and we can see the bulbs are still on. If we want to turn the bulbs off, all we have to do is open the switch, and now the current can't flow through the circuit. And back on again. Okay, so here we have a circuit with one bulb. Here's another circuit with one cell and two bulbs. And in this one, we have two cells and two bulbs. So here's the question, which circuit will have the brightest bulbs? Hint, there's more than one answer. And the answer is these two. Okay, let's see what makes these two have equal brightness. Starting with the left, we have one cell and one bulb. On the right, we have two cells and two bulbs, which is the same as saying, one cell and one bulb. The one in the middle will be less bright. It has one cell which is shared between two bulbs. That means each bulb gets less potential difference or less voltage, and therefore it will be less bright. And therefore they will be dimmer. Okay, moving on to parallel circuits. How do we show this as a simple circuit diagram? Just like this. So in a parallel circuit, we have two different paths for the current to flow. The current can flow like this, or it could flow like this. Of course, both are happening at the same time. Here we have a switch again. This time the switch is closed. Because it's closed, that means the current is flowing through the whole circuit and both of the bulbs are on. If I open the switch, both of them turn off because the current cannot flow anywhere. Let's add a switch to each branch. Again, all the switches are closed, so the current is flowing everywhere. How about if I open this switch? Now, one bulb has turned off, but the other one is still on. And the reason behind that is because current can still flow through this branch. If I do the opposite, close the first switch and open the second one, now the first bulb turns on and the second one turns off because the only way for the current to flow is going to be this way. And if I open both of them, the current cannot flow through any of the branches, so the bulbs stay off. And back on again. Parallel circuits are useful if you have many light bulbs connected together. If one of them breaks, the rest of them can still work. However, if they were connected in series, one breaks and they all turn off. Let's talk about current. Current gets shared between the two branches. So, for example, we have three ammeters over here. 
I'm going to 1 on the main branch and I'm going to 2 and 3 on each individual branch. The current from these two add up together to give us a total current. So let's say this is 3 amps and this one says 2 amps. That means the total current is going to be 5 amps, 3 plus 2. Let's do another example. Let's say the total current is 7 amps and we know that one of the branches has a 4 amp current. What will the other branch be? So we know that these two have to add up to give us 7. 7 take away 4 equals 3, so it will be 3 amps. The next rule is that potential difference in parallel circuits is the same everywhere. So that means if we have a 10 volt cell, this bulb gets 10 volts, and so does this one. How about if we have a 40 volt cell? Again, both of them get 40 volts. And even if I had another branch, that would also get 40 volts. So the voltage is always going to be the same. All you have to do is look at the cell, and all of your branches will have the same voltage as the cell. Don't forget, current, however, adds up together to give us a total current. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.